Perhaps I'm confused, and maybe some people in my audience can help me out. Maybe more specifically, the ladies in my audience can help me out. The woman on your left is Idalides Cabrera. And in this picture, sitting next to a random guy named Juan, we don't see anything going on that you would think was inappropriate. Unfortunately, there are other pictures. And this is where my confusion begins. I'd like to ask a question, ladies. If you were married to a man, engaged to a man, had a man who was your boyfriend, and you walked into an establishment, and you saw him sitting next to a woman with his arm around her, and her hand casually slipped into his lap, would you be upset about that? Would that be something you would think is appropriate behavior for a man who, in this particular image, is married to another woman? You see, and it wasn't just a snapshot in time. Sometimes somebody can say something funny and they'll reach over and just maybe tap somebody on the leg as a joke. Well, it wasn't the case. The hand remained there. And looking at the body language of a random guy named Juan and this woman, you would honestly believe that they were not just passing buddies or friends. Now, to my mind, this is more evidence of random guy named Juan's adherence to the value system of D.C., the value system of New York. And, to some extent, this little part of Miami, Hialeah, Parkland, Weston, this uber-elitist, super-rich area that doesn't have the family values of the people of Venezuela. This is why I talk about this. Because there are, much like here in this country, two Venezuelas. There are those who have conservative values, biblical values, and then there are others, much like we have in this country. There's a split. And this guy, while he says he represents everyone, only represents those others. He doesn't represent family values. He doesn't represent conservative values. He represents these values the ones that allow you, when you're a married man, to sit and laugh it up with some other woman with her hand in your lap. It kind of reminds me a little bit about this cringy moment when Rubio went in for the hug with Ivanka. I'm not going to show the video just because it's that uncomfortable to watch. It's really bad, but you can kind of get the idea here. She goes complete frozen, stiff as a board, and just like, yeah, I'm leaving. It was very ugly, but there is confusion now. And it seems like the media around the world can't make up their mind as to who the real first lady of Venezuela is. According to DC, you would think it would be Fabiana Rosales. This is Fabiana Rosales. This is the wife of a random guy named Juan. This is Idlides Cabrera. Some random woman that Juan is chatting up in a bar. But here... This is 26 March 2019. Reuters says, quote, wife of Venezuela's Guaido to visit Pence, Melania Trump. Not first lady of Venezuela. Here. Reuters also. But this is 27 May 2020. Now, Reuters is a German publication. Germany 
is one of those countries that apparently has sided with D.C. in saying that random guy named Juan is president. However, in this article, multiple times they refer to Celia Flores, the wife of Nicolas Maduro, as the first lady of Venezuela in the title. U.S. takes aim at the power behind Venezuela's Maduro, his quote-unquote first lady. And then when you go down to the first line of the article, First Lady Celia Flores has a long record, blah, 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 blah. ABC. Venezuelan opposition leader's wife emerges as potent force. Hmm. It looks like the coalition is starting to crack. Because we have seen, in the last few days, some very strange things begin to happen now that Venezuela is holding these, quote-unquote, mercenaries. You see, there's a problem with that story. The mercenaries said that they were under the impression they had the backing of D.C. D.C., Mike Pompeo himself, came out and said, fact, we will do everything we can to get these people back. Why would you do that for criminals? According to Washington, D.C., they had nothing to do with this. If they had nothing to do with this, then these are just random vigilantes, random criminals who deserve what they get. Why would D.C. make any effort at all to get them back, given the crimes they've committed? There's one more tanker left to dock from Iran in Venezuela, having run the blockade. You have to wonder, with Nicolas Maduro now sitting in the driver's seat, if D.C. has backed down, not publicly, but privately. Because they want those people back. Because those people might have more information than what even they know. This is something that happens with a lot of de detainees. They, you hear it in the movies, but it really is the truth. That... Sometimes people like these guys that went into Venezuela in this failed raid, they have information they don't think is important. So when they say, I don't know anything or I don't know this, that might be their impression of what they know. But when you end up getting all of the information out of them, there might be some key details that even they don't think are important that are huge. We're also starting to see now, apparently, England is going to bring it before a court about this gold that they've stolen from Venezuela and see if it can be used for food purchases. I thought they had seized it from Venezuela to give it to a random guy named Juan so that he could buy food, but apparently that's not what's happening now. Apparently, that gold is going to go before some type of a court, and I'm going to guess more than likely it's going to be released. Either probably to China, Russia, one way or the other, it's going to make its way back into the hands of the actual elected government of Venezuela, President Nicolas Maduro, and his first lady, Celia Flores. So while everyone was paying attention to uh, freedom coming to Venezuela and all of this pro-DC military nonsense, random guy named Juan was chatting up ladies using his newfound fame to... Well, I'm not going to say, because this platform is a little bit difficult sometimes when you talk about the specifics that way, but 
I think you guys can probably use your own imaginations and figure out what is going on with Venezuela's opposition leader's wife and her husband. It's just so sad. It really is. That this guy can't be conscious enough of his own self, his own space, to understand how his decisions not only affect him, but his wife, their child. Just breathtaking. But once again, more evidence of D.C. New York values. And we'll leave it there. Like, share, subscribe.